Clicker games aren't really something I figured I'd ever play. They didn't look involved enough for me to want to spend my time on. But forget me not, my organic garden stood out to me. A game where you grow kidneys on trees? It's a story where you harvest organs and no one needs to wake up in a tub of ice. You start as an apprentice of a store owner named Irene. You play as her employee, Organa. Huh, a little on the nose there. Irene gives you the task of growing kidneys off of a strange plant. They grow as long as they have enough water. You use your limited supply in your watering can to keep the plants hydrated. When you run out of water, you just wait a few seconds and it will recharge. You continue your harvest until Irene tells you about frogs. Buying animals with the money you earn from shipping organs will help some tasks go faster. In the case of frogs, your watering can will recharge quicker if the frog is next to it. The frogs can wander away, but if you click on them, you can nudge them in the right direction. With just one plant and a few frogs, it's a little slow at first. But as you continue, your plant will gain levels and grow more fruit at a time. Even your little animal friends can level up. Despite growing organs, this game is pretty tranquil. Oh look, we got a customer. Welcome to our... Yikes, that that is one dead-eyed kid. Oh wait, that's just a doll. So this guy here, he wants to buy an organ and put it in the doll? This game is starting to get weird. Apparently these organs can bring things to life. Irene tells you to go make a great kidney for the customer. Once the kidney tree gets to a certain level, you can produce higher quality fruit. To make great organs, it will take longer to grow and more water. Higher level fruit grants more XP for the tree and can sell for more. When the boy returns, Irene tells him that the organs can bring things to life because each of them have a soul. If you were to put more than one organ into something, it would cause something terrible to happen. As you continue in the game, you'll have little quests you can complete, such as delivering a certain amount of organs, raising levels, and buying more animals. This along with the special orders you finish will net you cash you can use to buy more animals. You'll later find things like moles, butterflies, and lizards, all with their own different purposes. Aside from the quests, you'll get special orders from the different customers. There's some strange patrons that enter the store. You've got a witch who wants to make artificial life, a guy that seems to have a crush on Irene and always buys by the bulk. Then there's this spooky lady in black. You even get a family of meerkat looking creatures called stoats that come by. And Irene can somehow communicate with them. Do they pay cash or credit? So what would meerkats want to buy? Well, after Irene gives you the heart tree, she gives you the meat grinder. Now you can mulch up unripe fruit, aka organs, into mincemeat. We've gone from quirky Harvest Moon to Sweeney Todd territory pretty quickly. Interestingly enough, it's never stated if these organs are human or not. They can be implanted in humans after being altered, but it seems like they have tons of different uses. Looks like a one-size-fits-all kind of deal. As you progress, you'll gain access to the aforementioned heart tree and grinder, along with the new stomach tree. By this time, the kidney tree is a high enough level that it can produce excellent fruit. To make one takes more effort as you have to grow a great fruit and then remove the other organs on the tree. You must focus on only a few fruit at a time to produce an excellent quality product. Each time you harvest an excellent organ from the tree, you will move on to the next chapter of the game. Naturally, Organa wants to show Irene this cool new kidney, but is interrupted by a customer and her terrifying musical score. The lady in black eagerly buys the kidney and rushes off. Afterwards, we cut to Irene having tea with her friend. Don't ask me what her purpose is, she doesn't show up much and she never buys my stuff. The game falls into a bit of a routine as you continue. Get more plants, complete quests, and get special orders. I didn't feel like the game was getting too monotonous, because it gave me enough story and new content that I wanted to keep going. However, I do wish some of the story segments went on a little longer, and there are a few that aren't all that interesting. Despite being a clicker game, I felt pretty involved. When completing quests, you'll have to ask yourself which trees are a priority. You have a limited supply of water, so you might ignore some plants in favor of others. You'll also need to try and coordinate with your animal pals. You can just leave them, but they're much more useful if you push them along. All this together helped me to pay attention to the game instead of falling asleep or checking my phone. Well, here's another customer. A young girl with a cat arrives and asks if she can have an organ. She says she wants to give the cat the ability to talk. The organ can do this, but it won't work on a living creature. You'd have to use something like an inanimate object, like the doll. Irene explains this and tells the girl to bring the cat next time and she'll feed it. We're not feeding it mincemeat, right? Uh, the Stoat family already ate it all. The girl returns with... A dead cat? She killed it so that she could replace its heart and talk to it. Whoa. Irene tells the girl that the organ can revive it, but it won't be the same cat. 
The girl doesn't seem to care and just asks for the heart. What a little psycho! And here is where I mentioned the tone of this game. It's very cheery and calm, but seems to have dark and pretty creepy undertones. Everyone is so nonchalant about everything. I had to ask, is this okay? Should I just accept this and go with the flow? Except that thing with the cat, that's not cool. But take for instance a young, sick boy who wants to be like the other kids. He comes in and asks for new organs to increase his abilities. Is it okay to do this? Irene never seems to stop any customer, she just sells them the organs. She doesn't seem to be driven by money, but she seems totally content with letting people do rather questionable things. Is this all safe? Is this even legal? I hope that doll guy is still alive. The game continues and you unlock the water system. This allows you to immediately fill a plant with the max amount of water it needs, or the entirety of the water you have stored. This makes things a lot quicker, and more convenient. And in the beginning, they already gave you the option to just hold down the mouse button instead of clicking. That makes things a lot easier for me and my mouse. Oh dear, it's that doll. It's back, but without its owner. It comes in and asks for a stomach, but it already has an organ in it. This is where pickling organs comes into play. Yup. Pickling organs. Let's make this a little creepier. Jokes aside, pickling ripe organs will remove the dangers of something terrible happening. This is also how we give these organs to humans. Well, there you go, Dolly. Have fun being able to eat food now. Ah, that doll's gonna kill someone one of these days. After you acquire all five trees, you'll eventually start finishing some of the characters' stories. It's strange, but I've grown quite attached to a lot of the characters in this. I beat Organic Garden in about 7 to 8 hours. I really enjoyed my time with the game, and I think it had a surprising amount of depth for a clicker. But there is one major caveat to this game that will probably put most people off. It's a clicker game that costs money. $10 to be exact. I think it'll be worth it depending on if you like clicker games or just simple games. If you're kind of in the middle, I'd say check it out when it has a large price drop during a sale. The game does seem a bit experimental, so I can imagine not everyone is going to enjoy it. But the time I spent with it, I found it to be an interesting experience. So this game does have a main story, right? And all stories come to an end. So how does this one close? Well, if you don't mind seeing the ending, I'll fill you in. With every excellent organ you harvest, the woman in black returns each time to buy it. She seems to be preparing the organs for some type of experiment. Upon taking the fourth organ, she tells how she knows Irene, and they both studied under the same master. The teacher had them learn alchemy and both sought ways to create artificial organs. Irene created soul-bearing fruit on trees, but the woman in black used her own soul to create fruit. As a result, her fruit is unstable and deadly. When Irene returns, Organa tells her all about the woman. They know that she only needs one last piece, so they decide to prepare for her final arrival. Once you have the final excellent organ, Irene makes a plan with what we know. The woman in black only arrives when Irene is out with her friend, so they'll make a decoy. After you make ten more organs, Irene plans on making identical living dolls of her and her friend to fool the woman. You create and set up the dolls. Yeah, that seems about right. The woman in black arrives, and Irene confronts her. All this time she had apparently been planning on bringing her brother back to life after killing him with one of her own experiments. And her real name is Chica, okay. And not only this, but she shows that she has weaponized her own body to create acidic weapons. Uh, I don't think we thought this plan through all the way. Uh, what were we going to do when we confronted her? Just give her a stern talking to? She makes the ultimatum, hand over the organ or die. But Organa won't take this sitting down. Oh dear, can't see anything. I died over a colon. Tell my 27 frogs that I love them. Organa awakes to find that she is still alive. She jumped in the way of Chica's attack and was gravely wounded. Apparently part of her torso got dissolved. Sheesh, Organa, you're unstoppable. The organ was crushed in the fight and Chica disappeared. Irene tells that Organa's heart was damaged and she could have replaced it with a new one. However, she tells her that she wouldn't do that because it would have changed who Organa was. Aww. So how did Organa survive that? Well, I believe Organa was never human to begin with. She's never shown on screen and is referred to as pretending to be human when Chica sees her. It's been stated that it isn't impossible to make something close to human in this world. She's constantly working in the garden, out of sight, so she might have just been made to do manual labor. But as time went on, maybe Irene began to see her as something more. 
And that was Forget-Me-Not My Organic Garden. Once you complete the game, you can still continue it and keep harvesting to your heart's content. Not only this, but there's a true hidden ending in the game that I still have yet to find. Overall, I found this strange and calming experience to be very refreshing. You can find games out there that are plenty more fun or challenging or that have more content, but I really enjoy unique experiences, and that's what I would classify this game as. If you want something calming and a bit odd, this is one to keep an eye on. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and recommend a weird game in the comments. What do you consider to be an odd game?